What's going on everybody? I'm Kevin with Custom Night Vision and today we're going to do a video, I don't know what you want to call it, kind of like a beginner night vision user's guide, manual, do's and don'ts, that kind of thing. So we get a lot of crazy questions all the time from customers that bought night vision and we realize they don't really know a whole lot about what they just bought. So we're going to give you kind of the down and dirty rundown on do's, don'ts, all that kind of stuff. Hacks, whatever you want to call it. So uh, the first thing I want to talk about is light exposure. Night vision devices will not just combust if you uh, turn them on in a room like this with a lot of lights on. However, you don't want to leave them directed at a light source for an extended period of time uh, in a stationary fashion meaning you don't want to leave your night vision on and just leave it on the table um, with all the lights on because that's how you get things burned into your tubes. Some tubes are more resilient than others, but uh, some are pretty sensitive. If that does happen, it's not the end of the world. We did a whole video a while back on black boxing. Check that out. You can black box your night vision device and sometimes, most of the time, it'll clean up a lot of those kind of ghosts left in your image screen. So again, if you're going to take them outside in the daytime, try to cover them up. Um, we ship all of our monoculars with day caps. You can leave the day cap on at any time you're not using it. That helps out a lot. Or any of the bino binos we sell uh, ship with bikini covers 99% of the time. So when you're not using them day or night, just go ahead and flip those bikini covers you know, right up into place. It's cheap insurance, it's easy, it takes you less than 10 seconds. The next thing I wanna cover is battery type or etiquette. So anytime you're not using your night vision, go ahead and take the battery out. There's no reason for it to be in there other than convenience. Um, we do recommend that you use a lithium battery. Do not put alkaline batteries in your night vision devices. There's no reason to do that. The lithiums are better in literally every way. The silver energizer lithiums have been awesome. We've used literally thousands of them. They don't uh, explode like the alkaline do, and they actually have vents in the top. If you have one of these at home, check it out. There's a few holes around the positive side of the battery, and I think there's a regulator inside uh, that, that battery top as well that's going to keep that battery from uh, discharging when you don't want it to. So again, batteries out of the night vision when you're not using it and always use lithiums. Don't use alkaline batteries. I can't tell you how many times I've tried to, uh, I've had to dig out, um, you know, off brand batteries out of a battery compartment like this. Uh, depending on the night vision housing type, it could ruin the whole housing. So it's not a huge deal. Like the housing's not the most expensive thing in the world, but you know, you're going to, Pull your night vision out wanting to use it and it's going to be completely inoperable. Um, use lithium batteries. The next question I get a lot is uh, how do I mount the night vision device to my night vision mount? Be it a G24 or something like this, Nerodos mount or one of these um, Nocturne mounts. Uh, they all work very similar but I'm going to go ahead and take this mount off this helmet here and show you. They all have a dovetail shoe. This would be like the female side. And if you see, it's it kind of angles back towards this little locking key. Your night vision has a male dovetail on it. And that's essentially gonna slide in here like this. And you should hear a positive click with some feedback, letting you know that it's locked in place. To release the night vision from the mount, there's a button right here on the front. You just press that and you can free the night vision from your mount. Um, depending on what kind you have, they all function about the same. This one's got a little lever here that you pull down to free the night vision. Uh, this one has a little lever you pull up or, oh, sorry, it's down to free the night vision, but all very similar in how they work. So that's how you put your night vision on a helmet mount. Um, caveat to that, if you ordered a PVS-14 or any other monocular, you're going to need some kind of J-arm. 
So depending on which one you bought, um, they typically all have this flathead style screw. Some of them have a thumb screw. That's pretty neat, but essentially you're going to look, look at the bottom of the J arm. There's two little, um, dots here. Those will typically line up with these two little, um, contacts here. Just set that on there. Try to hold it as straight as you can. Gently start that screw until you feel the threads engage. Wiggle that around, make sure it's lined up with where it's supposed to be, and then tighten that down. If you're using a Tonto or other some other night vision monoculars, um, actually you probably use it on all of them. Uh, Noise Fighters, this company uh, that made this J-Arm, they sell a little uh, kind of adapter plate that goes under this that will kind of clean up any of that slop in there in the mount. I suggest using that because if this night vision device is not square on the mount and it's getting canted, that's going to cause some, I guess, collimation type issues where the image you see through your night vision is not going to be directly in line with the vision of your unaided eye. So um, the better you can have this mounted here, the better experience you're going to have using your night vision. Um, once this J-arm is on your monocular. Our order of operations works the same in conjunction with the mount. Just in, out, that whole thing we just talked about. So that's night vision mounts, J-arms, etc. The next thing I want to discuss is how to put a mount on your new helmet. So most of our customers, I would have to imagine, are going to have a G24 or some variant of the Wilcox mount here. They're designed to work with these shrouds. Uh, some of them are, are actually branded Wilcox, so they work really well together. But on this G24, there is a small bar. This is the uh, side of the mount that faces the helmet, and you can move it side to side. Essentially, that's going to retract a little um, tab here that interfaces with the mount. So just go ahead and shift this over so that tab is in. You're going to rock it in, uh, kind of like an AK mag, cleat or whatever you want to call it here goes up top. Then you set the mount down flush on the shroud and then click that over like that. Now your night vision mount is securely attached to the helmet via the shroud. Uh, next, we want to talk about how to adjust the mount. A lot of these mounts adjust in different ways, but they all essentially, again, do the same thing. On this Wilcox mount here, try to bring it in center frame. Uh, the main thing you're going to want to know how to do is flip the night vision up, like so. This big button here on the side is what releases this arm and lets it flip up. To move the night vision closer or further away from your face, you're going to squeeze this, these two little buttons here on either side, and you can move that carrier in or out closer or further away from your face. This lever right here will let you adjust how high the night vision is riding on the helmet in relation to uh, your eyes. So sometimes it's good to leave that up a little higher than uh, you think is appropriate. So you can look under your night vision. It depends on what you're doing, but um, this is a good function or feature to know how to use. And last but not least is the cant feature. This knob right here, when you turn that, it will adjust the angle of this arm in relation to the mount itself and the shroud. So when you first get your night vision and you put the mount on it, spend some time really adjusting that uh, to a position that's comfortable in front of your eyes. This will increase uh, the likelihood of a, uh, I guess, a good experience using night vision. We get a lot of questions about how to focus night vision, which is surprising to me, but we're gonna go over it again. We did a YouTube reel short thing a while back and people thought um, it was pretty entertaining, but I was 100% serious. So to make this super simple, the big side is the side you look through. The little side is the side you point at stuff. So don't look through the little side, look through the big side. If 
you want to know how to focus these, you always start with the objective. Looking through your night vision, you're going to turn this objective until what you're looking at is in as good a focus as you can get it. Then you're going to come over here to the eyepiece and you're going to manipulate that until that image cleans up quite a bit. Then you're going to go back to the objective, try to resolve the focus some more. Then you can find, come back to the eyepiece. You can fine tune that a little bit and continue this process until you get the crispest image possible. If you have any trouble with this, obviously you can reach out with, out to us. We can walk you through it, but it's pretty simple. Um, front, back, front, back, front, back until both images look clean and clear and you're not getting any kind of weird um, eye strain. You want these to match as closely as possible as well. If you have one of your diopters out at plus two and the other one at negative two, that's going to cause some problems um, with uh, eye fatigue and probably headache. If you have an RPO diopter that does not have the marked numbers on it, you can simply take the night vision off your mount and look at it like this and make sure they're pretty closely aligned. Um, that's just kind of a trick for me. Uh, but yeah, that's how you focus your night vision. The same is, holds true with a PVS-14, objective eyepiece, objective eyepiece, until you get the best image possible and it's not hurting your brain. Another question we get a lot is, uh, how should I store my night vision? Well, I'm going to reference um, what we talked about with batteries. Take the batteries out of it first and foremost. Secondly, you wanna cover up all the lenses if possible. If you have bikini covers, this is what I recommend. It's very easy to get a good sealed cover on both, all four or both uh, optics this way. Uh, to take it a step further, every night vision device that we sell here at Custom Night Vision should ship in one of these hard cases. It's just a generic kind of Pelican-esque case with foam in it. We rip it out to fit whatever night vision device you purchased and you can place it right in there and store it like that. If this is too big or bulky, there's another product that we sell frequently and we like a lot. It's this uh, hot pocket here. So you can drop your night vision. If you have a binocular, you can drop this night vision in here just like this. The dovetail interfaces nicely with the inside of the case. The top on it, pull the shock cord, cinch it tight. Now your night vision is good and protected. Um, those are my preferred ways or methods to store night vision. This is what we recommend. So do that and you will be good to go. Let's talk about care and maintenance real quick. So again, it's another question we get a lot. There's not a whole lot of maintenance that needs to be done on night vision. Uh, I don't know how critical it is that you send this these night vision devices back on a regular interval to get repurged. Honestly, in my opinion, it's not a big deal, but if you want to do that, we can do that for you. Uh, as far as care, I think we made a video a couple years ago about how kind of rough you can be with these things. I mean, you can drop this in a bucket of water. You can pull it out, use a good clean microfiber like this, and just wipe off any of the excess dirt and debris. If you're shooting a lot, sometimes you're gonna get some carbon fouling, stuff like that on the objective, just wipe it away. Little water, these lenses are extremely robust and if you scratch one, it's not the end of the world. You're probably never gonna notice it when you're using it. So that kind of brings me to my next point. I don't see a huge advantage in running a bunch of sacrificial lenses and all this stuff I see people put on their night vision that just makes it look ridiculous and add weight. The optics on night vision devices, uh, unless you're going with the 50 degree stuff are relatively inexpensive. I've never seen someone out and out break an objective, you know, doing airsoft or whatever. I've never seen that. So don't feel like you need to put a bunch of sacrificial windows and uh, camera filters and all this nonsense on the end of your night vision. Uh, an iris makes sense from a functionality standpoint, but just putting another, another piece of glass on each one of your um, optics, you're just adding another element for light to pass through and potentially potentially distort what you're looking at. So I don't recommend that. If you want to do that, that's fine, but it's really not necessary. 
Well, that's just about everything I could think of uh, based on the questions that we get frequently. If you have other questions on you know, how to do certain things with your night vision, put them in the comments. I'll answer them there or we'll make another video. It's not a big deal. Uh, don't be afraid to ask the only stupid questions are the ones that you don't ask. I know I give y'all a lot of shit for asking silly questions, but that's just me being a dude. I'm hard on people. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. Again, if you have any questions, get down in the comments, leave them down there. I promise I'll answer them. Doesn't matter how stupid they are or how stupid you think they are. Ask them. Thank you for watching this video. If you have, um, questions about anything we didn't talk about, reach out to us via any of our social medias or call us. Our phone number's on the website, customnightvision.com. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.